Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. A few years ago, I went to the most exquisite banquet I'd ever been to. It was at the St. Regis Hotel in Dana Point. It was table after table after table of food. You almost couldn't comprehend it. They had a small room just for desserts. It had like probably four tables of different types of desserts you could get. And that was just one part of the banquet. It was shockingly amazing and huge. I also remember a time when I was in India and I was at a train station waiting for my train. I remember walking by a woman who had three children all laying on the ground asleep and her children were so emaciated and clearly starving. It brought so much sadness to my heart seeing that woman with her three children all slowly starving to death. Probably most of us have had some type of experiences like these too. We've seen the banquets of life and we've seen the starvation of life. But what we may not have been aware of is that psychologically the same is true. There are people living life as if it were a beautiful banquet where everywhere they turn they see things that just bring joy and happiness and peace to their lives. And there are other people that no matter where they turn, they're starving inside emotionally. They're dying inside emotionally. And no matter what life brings them, there is no peace. There is no happiness. And yet these two people could be in the exact same situation. And one could see life as a banquet. And the other could see life as emptiness, as starvation. What I want to talk about today is that life is a banquet for all of us, but most people are starving to death. Why is that? It would be like going to the banquet that I went to and there was only one food that you wanted, say a certain type of caviar, and unless they had that caviar, you are not going to be happy. Even with all the other foods there, you are going to be miserable and perhaps even starving to death because you would only eat that one type of food, that certain caviar. I know that may sound crazy, but that's how many people live. Think about the person who's healthy, who's young, who's attractive, who could have many friends and family that supports them, but they have to get into medical school because they want to become a doctor. And if they don't get into medical school, they're going to be miserable. So all their energy, all their tension goes towards, I have to get into medical school. I have to become a doctor. And even though, I, as I said, they have health, they have friends, they have family, they have people that love them, they're focused on that one thing, getting into medical school and becoming a doctor. And if that doesn't happen, even if they have all these other beautiful things in their life, their desire, their need to become a doctor is so strong that if there are bumps along the way or if something doesn't work out, they may choose to end their life rather than enjoy the banquet around them because they have that one thing. They need to become a doctor. They need their special caviar. You may be thinking, I wouldn't do that. That's silly. But don't we often do that? Aren't there things going so well in our lives? And there's so many things we could be excited about, we could focus on. But that one thing that goes wrong completely ruins our day or perhaps even our life. I remember once knowing a woman who had a husband that loved her. She had a beautiful daughter but she was miserable. She actually wanted to die. Why? Because she wanted a second child. And if she couldn't have that second child, which she wasn't sure if she could because she was trying everything to have that second child, then her life was just misery. She lived in a beautiful home. She was educated. She had parents that loved her. She had so many things. But that one thing, that second child, not even the first child, the second child was causing her despair and misery. Again, we may not relate to that, 
But haven't we gone through times where one thing completely ruins our day? Perhaps you've seen or experienced this one. There are many people in the world that never get to go on a vacation anywhere, ever. And yet, in wealthier countries, it's not uncommon that people get to go on vacation for a week or two, sometimes overseas, sometimes at a beautiful resort, and it can be wonderful. But then on their way there, on their way back, their plane gets delayed, their plane gets canceled, and they have to make new plans. And even though they may be so blessed to be on this great vacation or just had this great vacation, that one thing, that cancellation or that delay, ruins their time, ruins their trip, takes away everything they were so blessed with, and they just focus on, this isn't fair, why has my flight been canceled? It isn't right, I don't like this, I hate this. And yet, other people would get if anything to be able to do what they were doing. We all know stories like this. Or how about someone, again, who has health, who has a good job, who has friends, who has so many things going for them, but the person that they love doesn't love them back. And it may be so intense that again, they would rather be dead than continue living, even though they have all these wonderful things in their life. We all know stories like this. So how does this happen? How do we starve when we're living in a life that's a banquet? And that's for many people, perhaps most. So let's start with this. Life is a banquet, but sometimes at the banquet, some of the food is rotten. Some of it is spoiled. Some of it smells not very good. So we don't eat those foods. We don't spend time trying to decide, oh, should I eat this or not? What we do is we find foods that have a good taste to them, we enjoy, that are pleasurable, and we pretty much just ignore or stay away from the rotten food, correct? Well, life is like that. Life always has something beautiful, something wonderful to be attentive to. And people that live well do this one thing. They learn to enjoy things intensely. And because they do that, they don't need very much because that one thing, perhaps that certain dessert, you know, a chocolate mousse or that beautiful Caesar salad with salmon on top, those are the things right now that they enjoy and it's available so they eat that. Now, there may be something else there that they don't like, but why would they be attentive to that? I mean, they may still smell it while they're eating their food, but they're mostly going to focus on intensely the food they have. Yes, they may notice that over there is some rotten food, and even periodically the smell comes through their area, and it isn't so great. But then they look at what's before them, that chocolate mousse, they put it in their mouth, and they say, this is good. And they give their attention to what is good. And because they do that, even though there are some foods in that banquet that aren't very good, sometimes they're quite bad, but because they're focused on the food before them and they're really good at intensely enjoying that food, even though there's other things going on, their attention is on the good things because life is a banquet and there's always something good to choose from. So let's take this to the practical. What would this look like? Okay, let's say the love of our life, the person that we want to spend time with, wants a divorce or doesn't want to date us. We can say, well, that's my favorite moose and I love that moose. And right now it's not available. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go over and have perhaps a cheesecake or I'm going to have a pumpkin pie. Maybe they're not quite as good, but they're good. And I'm going to enjoy them. So a person going through a divorce might say, well, this sucks, but now I get a little bit more time to see my friends. I can develop new relationships. I can get out and do other things. Sure, I wish I was with my partner, but I'm not. That's not available right now. But what is available? I could call up my friend Jim or Joe. Say, hey, you want to go to a movie? And when I'm at the movie or dinner with them, that's what I focus on. I don't think about 
the person I want to be with, I think about who I'm with. And I do it with intensity, meaning I intensely enjoy that which is before me, not that which I don't have or I long for. Or let's use the example of like the medical student. So that's super dangerous. That's like saying there's only one food in this whole banquet that I want and I want it more than anything else and it better be here or I'm going to be miserable. And every time I come to the banquet, I'm going to worry that they're going to take it away. And if they take it away, I'm just going to be in an awful place. And yet there's a whole banquet to choose from. I mean, that may sound crazy, but I'm telling you, a lot of people do this. Yeah, we may not want to be a medical student, but maybe we want this fill in the blank, this home, this child, this relationship, this one bad thing to go away, this stinky food not to be there, where there's tons of other things we could focus on. Like we may have back pain, but back pain doesn't define us. It's just back pain. Can we do other things and focus on them instead? We may wish we had a bigger house, but we have a home to sleep in. There are people around the world that don't or sleeping on couches because that's all they have or even sleeping on the street. Life is always a banquet, but sometimes the foods we want aren't there. Sometimes there's stinky foods that are there and we have to say, okay, it's there, but I'm going to focus on the food that's before me. I may still smell the stinky food, like my back may hurt, like I may realize that there's not a lot of money in my bank account, but right now I can really enjoy this potato salad or I can really enjoy this cheesecake. And that's what people do that live life as a banquet. They get really good at intensely enjoying things. And then they don't need very much because because if one food isn't available, there's so many other things they can choose between. And because they see life as a banquet, they focus on the foods that are available, they enjoy them intensely, and they're thankful for what they have. That is the secret of enjoying life as a banquet and not starving to death with all this food before us. We have to not be attached to any one food. We have to flow with the changes and we have to focus on the things that are good in front of us, even if other things around us may be disturbing. We can do this. I've known people dying in hospital rooms that ask the window to be open so that they can hear the birds singing outside. We can be so good at seeing life as a banquet as long as we can focus on something that's beautiful because there is always something good to partake in in life no matter what there just is always something and when we do that what we'll find is as we go through beautiful times or as we go through hard times our life will be like a banquet because we will partake in the banquet of life which is always providing us something. And as long as we're flexible with our choices, as long as we're open to shift when something we want isn't there to something else that is there and make that something that we do want and enjoy, we will never starve and we will find that life is a banquet in our lives one day at a time, one breath at a time are beautiful. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, please go to happinesspodcast.org. And until next time, accept what is, love what is.